Good girl. Good job. Oh! Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's Canon Educator. Thank you so much for joining me today. Is there something out there that can save your dog's life? Yes, there is. What is it? Coming up next. I want to give you a little back history before we start this video. Before I professionally trained dogs full time, I was, an, I was a dog control officer as well as a professional dog walker. So I walked many packs of dogs, took care of a lot of people's dogs in the area that I live in now. Now with all of my clients, there were certain dogs that could be off leash and there were certain dogs that definitely could not. And in my animal control position, there were certain dogs that were getting hit by cars and there were certain dogs who just weren't. I wasn't finding them, I wasn't seeing them, I wasn't getting the calls about them. Is there a variable? Is there something that consistently tells me whether a dog is gonna be safe on leash and off? The answer is yes, there is variables. There are certain things that we can do to keep our dogs safer while still allowing them to enjoy their off leash life and be tired just like Lakota. So what is that variable? What allows us to be safer with our dogs? The, the simple ability to communicate with your dog. If your dog is off leash, you have to remember they're an animal. They have primal instincts, their nose is crazy good, their ears are crazy good, they're hearing, smelling things all the time, they're playing, they see stuff. And a lot of times dogs don't get the exercise mentally and physically that they need in the first place. So releasing them off leash without the control is a huge, huge thing that dogs get into trouble with because a lot of people don't train with their dogs off leash. What is that variable? What can save a dog's life? The ability to communicate with your dog once the leash is off. Remember when we used to have cords connected to our phones? Well, now we don't have that anymore. Technology is coming so far. We're advancing to be more effective, more efficient every single day in our world. Why are our dogs stuck in the past? This line, safety and safe, yes. Progressional, not so much. Let's talk about it. Now guys, you know I love dogs more than anything else in the whole world. I've devoted my entire life to them. I wanna be able to educate and teach and help my clients all over the world be able to have that better relationship, have that clarity off leash, and more importantly, safety off leash, because I know how much our dogs mean to, to you, and it means to me as well. So out of all the years I've been working with dogs, guys, the most effect, actually the only way you're able to effectively communicate with a dog completely off leash is through technology. And we're gonna do a Q&A at the end or a frequently asked question um, thing at the end to discuss a lot of frequently asked questions about the collar. So today I wanna discuss how the wireless collar can save your dog's life. The wireless collar is the only thing that can work with your timing, your effectiveness to communicate, your consistency, especially as a dog trainer, training so many different people, my clients aren't dog trainers, so they need the best ability and timing and consistency with their training in order to be successful with the dogs that they're working with. So to be able to transition, like this for an example is the Dogtra 280C, which is my go-to unit, for me to be able to say, hey, everything that I just did is a push of a button and you can do it. So it, it, it breaks down the barrier of the hardships of non-dog trainers and dog owners. The timing, the consistency with the collar is bar none because of the technology. The same button I push is the same button everyone else pushes when they're working with their dogs. So I must add that there's so many different things. I'm not trying to throw this video together to say slap a remote collar on your dog and they're off leash. That's farther from the truth than anything. The remote collar, if used properly, is one of the most effective, efficient, humane things that you can do to get your dog responsibly off leash. Now, just like anything in life that is wonderful and helps us out tremendously, it also takes a lot of work. So please do your research on how to introduce the collar correctly. I'm going to link the specific collar that I love using across the board in the description below by Dogtra. Um, it's just another tool in the toolbox, but 
um, it's really, really important that when you're introducing the collar that it is done properly. If you don't use it properly or introduce it properly, you can mess up your dog just like any other tool that we put on our dog. But with technology, again, comes a, a different learning curve than let's say a physical correction or food or something like that. All right, guys, we are doing a giveaway. I'm gonna be giving away three No Bad Dog face masks. And all you guys have to do to automatically get entered to win, even if you've done it on a recent video or on a past video, is leave your dog's name letter by letter in the comments below. A lot of people are leaving letter for letter in the same comment like this. What you have to do is letter, enter, letter, enter until you've completed your dog's name. And I will randomly select three people in the next 24 hours to win these face masks. And we're gonna do this every single video forever. So ready, set, go. Left. So just like anything that we do in dog training, guys, um, consistency is important. Um, reliability is, is also important. Watch how I can use the remote and not use the remote. Coda, out, plats. Good. So that was on a level six. This particular remote has 127 levels. Did that hurt her? No. Was it a communicative he annoyance pressure? Yes, on a level that's just like, hey, hey. So it's a reinforcement. So now the most important thing is, is will she do it without the remote? Of course. And I'm not just talking about my dog, I'm talking about dogs across the board. So I'm gonna recall her back, I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm not gonna touch the remote, I'm just gonna ask her to do the same thing and she should comply to everything I just said without the remote. Yes. Good girl. Take the remote, throw it over there. Throw the ball, yes, good girl. So now when she comes back, I'm gonna do the same thing without the remote. Lakota out, Lakota Platz. So that control has been conditioned and reinforced from the collar at some point in her life. I can do that 10 times out of 10, she'll do the same thing with or without the collar, doesn't matter. So the point is, is the questions that we get a lot is, can you train without the remote collar that? Sure, but my point is, is when I'm doing something like recall, which is gonna save a dog's life potentially, getting the dog back to me if there's a distraction, depending on where you live, spiders, um, oh, trucks, cars, uh, eagles, uh, velociraptors, whatever it may be, if there's things out there that your dog is gonna be primalistically or investigatory, is that a word, investigatory? I made it up. If they're investigating something and they're interested in that and they wanna go after it, your ability to, to communicate with the dog off leash when they're out playing fun with, and buddies in the sun on Memorial Day, happy Memorial Day everybody by the way, um, and then your dog chases something, um, your ability to communicate with that dog without anything is, is probably going to be zero because it's a currency at that point. So that particular thing that they're chasing, bobcats, cougars, bears, lions, whatever, is going to be more interesting than, hey Fido, come, if they can even hear you. So the ability to just simply tap the dog's shoulder from a distance is all I'm doing here. And I've done this many, many times where I've put the remote to my face, my neck, on the same levels, you cannot feel it at all. Feel it, I'm not talking about, ooh, that kind of stings. You can't even feel it. And again, if I don't have pressure, then the dog likely is gonna go, mm, I'm being a little opportunistic, I'm not gonna drop the ball or I'm not gonna down. My ability to be able to go to different places with my dog, Koda, yes! to go to different places with my dog is gonna be more enjoyable. If I'm having a better time, she's having a better time. And it takes, with a dog like this, like most dogs at home, it takes a good amount of exercise, both mentally and physically, to exhaust her, to have her feel completed as a dog, to have her feel, have her feel fulfilled. And if you're busy like me and a lot of other people, you wanna get those high quality reps in, bang, 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 training, 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 mental, physical, physical, and the ability to do that anywhere anytime under any circumstances by having the backup or the reinforcement from technology is invaluable. And now we're gonna move into some frequently asked questions <clears throat> that we get every single time we put up a dog training video with the remote. So I wanted to just share this video with you guys. I have a lot of videos on tutorials and how to introduce. This video is really about how to save a dog's life, how to make your dog more fulfilled, how to trust your dog better off leash, how to better your competitive obedience, how to do this, how to do that, how do you how can you? It's not how do you, it's not a mandatory thing. However, we get the question all the time, I want my dog to be off leash because I think they're gonna be more fulfilled. 
I agree, they probably are. And like with a dog like this, it would take me, the efficiency of getting her to this point would take me so much longer if I couldn't trust her off leash or whatever. And so I just wanted to make this video to help you guys as much as I possibly can. And now we're gonna get into some frequently asked questions from you guys via um, uh, YouTube. So one of the questions that we get frequently about the remote collar is, is it a shock collar? The answer is no, it's not a shock collar. Is it a collar that you can put on a dog that can have some aversive, corrective, painful tendencies? It could, but as you guys just saw, the application of the collar, just like anything else that we do as, as humans, like this chuck it is used to throw a ball for an animal to chase. Now, if I took it and started beating everybody over the head with it, that doesn't make this the wrong or that doesn't make this invention something that we should be afraid of. It, you're gonna look at that person and go, what the hell are you doing? That's not how you do it. So anyway, no, it is not a shock collar. It's a profound piece of technology that helps you communicate with your dog on leash and off and gives them the opportunity to be the most fulfilled, happiest dog they could ever be in your or their lifetime. You hungry? <laughs> Next question, how far do the remote collars go? Dogtra makes collars from a half a mile to a quarter mile to two miles to a mile and a half. The bigger the unit really depends on how far the unit goes. With this collar here, the Dogger 280C, it's a very small, compact collar. Goes a, goes a half a mile, so it's a pretty good distance. Why is it banned in some parts of the world? <clears throat> We've done a lot of research um, as a company, as well as working with our friends in Dogtra and having meetings and discussing like the progression and the future of remote collars and tools in general. It's banned in, so whenever I get the comment of it's banned in my country or it's banned in my area, it always saddens me because that's not a good thing. That's basically means that people in your area are taking tools that are intended to have a better lifestyle and relationship with your dog and abusing the power and abusing technology. So it's not a, like when you comment and say it's banned here and I'm proud of it, that's not actually a good thing. I understand that I'm a, and I used to say, um, like I didn't understand the banning and now I do, I'm becoming more acceptable to it because there's so many people using these wrong. And I would much rather have these tools banned in places where everyone's using them wrong versus having them in places and people using them right just one out of 10. So I understand the bans, but banning in most places and most circumstances is simply because the majority of people using these collars are using them improperly, inhumane, and they're uneducated about the proper introduction, introduction of the collar. So banning is a thing, it's going to happen with literally rice, uh, soup, uh, literally at hats. There's bannings in different places for different reasons, but the majority of tool bans in countries and areas is simply because there's not enough people using them correct, which is not a good thing or anything to be proud of. Is it 100%? No, nothing is 100%. Nothing is 100% with animals ever. But I can tell you, it's 100% better of having something on your dog that can communicate them from a half a mile away versus not having something. All right, guys, one, one last thing that we see often on our YouTube page and social media pages is people will say that using tools uh, takes away and or substitutes your skill set as an individual uh, and for me, as you guys know, dog training is an art. I consider it a craft. It's nothing I do as a hobby. It's nothing that I do because, um, you know, I want to make money. This is something that I care about a lot. And when we're building things, um, it doesn't matter if you're building a car, a house, um, a tech deck, or a dog, using different tools to help you get there faster, more efficient, more effective, uh, creatively, um, is, is by no means any hutch or crutch or any inability to, to be skillful. Um, I think using advancements and using different tools to create different pictures as well as create a, a, a better end goal. And so as you guys may or may not know, my job isn't to train dogs for people to come and observe like some sort of like talent show because that wouldn't be fun or lucrative at all. My job and my passion and the reason why I have this YouTube channel and the reason why I wake up every morning is not to help everyone, it's to help people who want help. It's to have somebody like yourself search, how do I do this with my dog? And accepting new ideas and getting creative and using technology to 
um, work with your dog and to do different things is, I think is a blessing. I think it's a privilege. I always say that all the time that the remote collar or different types of tools is a privilege. I'm very grateful for the people that are behind the science and all of the different uh, technology advancements to make tools like this to give my dog a better life. Uh, if I'm traveling, I'm on the road, I just let my dogs go and be able to recall them. Um, having a 30-foot long line on your dog as they're getting wrapped up in seaweed and jumping in the ocean and getting wrapped up in other uh, people with other flexies and other things is your idea of having like an advanced off-leash dog. Um, it's really just perspective of how you want your dog. If you want your dog to be completely off-leash and have the responsibility to recall your dog at any given time under any circumstance, um, for the most part anyway, um, having this little thing attached to your dog see it uh, I don't see it as any other um, just using different to help you get that your picture all right guys thank you so much for watching I truly do appreciate it if you haven't yet don't forget to like this video subscribe to my channel if you want more stuff like this and leave a comment in the comment below and let me know what you thought of this video as well as enter to win the free no bad dogs face mask below and I'll talk to you guys next time peace Here's one for the lonely hearts For the ones that fear the dark, you better